in this video, we're gonna be talking about how to welcome visitors at church, coming up. All right, so if we're meeting for the first time, I've helped thousands of churches attract thousands of new visitors, but what we found is the secret sauce is actually what to do once they actually show up, right? So getting them there isn't the hard part. The hard part is taking care of them, sweeping them off their feet, and then getting them to come back again. Because the only thing better than a first time visitor is a second time visitor. So let's take a look at five things that you can do in order to make sure that you sweep guests off their feet and ensure that they come back again. Okay, so my favorite way of bringing in new visitors and taking care of people once they come in the door is actually using the plan your visit model. And this is pretty simple if you've never heard of it. It's basically the idea of someone scheduling a visit to show up to your church on Sunday. That way you can actually assign a host to meet them at the front door, help them get their kids checked in, give them a tour of the property, introduce them to some key staff and leaders, and sit with them in service. Regardless of whether or not you're using the plan your visit model at your church, these five tips are gonna be able to help you with every single guest who comes through the door regardless of whether or not they scheduled a visit. Number one, people don't remember what you say, they remember how you make them feel. So we wanna concentrate on first impression, right? We wanna make them feel at ease. Guests don't wanna come out and they don't wanna be pressured to give money for the first time or to join a small group or to sign up for a volunteer team, right? They're there and they simply want to connect. Every single guest who comes through the door of your church is looking for some type of connection. So let's focus on personal connection and making sure that they meet plenty of warm, friendly people. And here's a pro tip, 80% of people who meet the pastor on their first visit will come back for a second visit, right? So train the people in your church that if they identify a first time guest and they're talking to somebody, don't just strike up a conversation and then let them leave. Make sure that they find you as the pastor and they introduce all first time guests to you. Because again, 80% of first time visitors who meet you as the pastor on the first visit will come back for a second visit. So start training your staff, your leaders, and all of your volunteers when they meet a first time visitor, one of the first things they need to do is find you and make sure those visitors meet you. All right, number two, first impression. Now, the hard truth is that the impression you make up front will actually determine whether or not the guest comes back again, and this happens long before the service is over. In fact, most guests make a decision on whether or not they're ever going to come back again before your sermon even starts, right? Which is crazy and kind of hard to hear. So you work all week long spending hours on your sermon, and all of these first-time visitors have already decided whether or not they're going to bring their family back next Sunday before you even get a chance to preach, because it all has to do with first impression. So we want to make sure that we are putting our best foot forward that we have warm friendly people greeting all of the guests number three don't treat them like VIP treat them like family now I've seen a lot of churches whether it's plan your visit or whether it's a VIP program or a red carpet program or some type of guest assimilation program and they try to roll out everybody and treat them like rock stars but listen this is the opposite of what people are looking for remember they're looking for connection they want to meet other people they're not coming in looking to be treated like a VIP they want to be treated like family. So one of the best thing you can do is just have laid back, friendly volunteers who are connecting with your guests and just treat them like family. Treat them the way you would if you'd been praying for your best friend for years to come to church and then one Sunday they actually showed up and brought their family. You wouldn't treat that person like a rock star and roll out the red carpet, right? You'd treat them like family. You'd take them behind the scenes, introduce them to the pastor and you'd introduce them to all the key staff and leaders and give them a tour of the building, right? That's what people are looking for. Not VIP, they're looking for family. Okay, so before I get to my last couple of points, uh, man, will you share this video? Right? Any pastors or church leaders that you know are trying to grow their church and retain more visitors, man, just send them this video so we can reach as many people as humanly possible. All right, number four, be enthusiastic but authentic. Right, so a lot of times in guest assimilation, it's easy to either be self-deprecating, right, and start talking about, oh, it's it's not normally like this, like normally it's not so dirty, or, or we're renovating over here. We usually have more people, but it's spring break. Don't point out all the things that are wrong. Don't be self-deprecating. Don't say anything negative, right? But don't be over the top excited either. Like, man, this is the best church on the face of the planet. I'm telling you, like, the sermons are so relevant. It's the best music ever, right? Just be authentic. Be excited. Everyone's excited about their church. Be excited, but be authentic. Train your volunteers to have conversations and to ask guests about them and not talk about themselves, right? You want to make sure that you're positioning yourselves as Yoda, the guide, and you're making the guest the center of the attention. They're Luke Skywalker, right? So instead of talking about you and talking about the church and all the things you have for the church, ask about them. In fact, one of the most powerful questions you can ever ask someone is, hey, so tell me your story. 
People love to talk about themselves and they love to talk about their story. And by saying something open-ended like that, you'll give them the chance to share as much or as little as they're comfortable with. But now they're talking about themselves and now you can connect with them on an emotional level. And finally, number five, never ask someone if they're new. Right, so this is a great practice because if somebody isn't new and you say, hey, what's up, is this your first time? Well, they might be offended. They might say, no, I've been going here for five years, man. Like, what the heck, right? So maybe they just haven't been for a while and now you just made them feel super awkward on the first Sunday that they came back. Right? So you never want to ask someone if they're new. And if they actually are new, then they're going to start worrying that they're sticking out like a sore thumb. Right? Like, oh my gosh, I knew I didn't wear the right thing or I just look weird or awkward or shoot, everyone knows that I'm not supposed to be here or that my life isn't as cleaned up as it should be. Right? You don't ever want to isolate anyone, whether they're not new or whether they are. So one of the best things to do if you think someone is new is just go up and introduce yourself. Say, hey, my name's Chris. I don't think we've met yet. Right? And start talking to people and just strike up a conversation. This is one of the easiest ways to get a chance to get into a conversation and get to know people. Just introduce yourself. Hey, I don't think we've met yet. What's up? My name's Chris. What's your name? And then it can easily lead into a question like, man, how long have you been going to the church? Right? Then if people have been going five years, they can tell you that. And if it's their first time, they'll tell you that too. But this is a much easier way than just coming up saying, hey, are you new? Don't offend people that have been around for a while or make visitors stick out like a sore thumb. Just introduce yourself and then ask them how long they've been going to the church. All right, and here is a bonus tip. Now, if you're interested in using the plan your visit model at your church, it's really simple, right? All you wanna do is have an option for people on your website to be able to sign up and schedule a visit, and you just need to collect their name, email, and phone number, and then you can contact them after they plan a visit and assign a friendly host to show them around on Sunday. It's kinda like having a best friend waiting for you at the front door. And you don't even need to trade up an entire plan your visit team, right? Just find your people people, right? These are the people that have never met a stranger. They're naturally friendly. They naturally smile. And just tell them, hey, when they get here, all you want to do is introduce them around to some key staff and leaders, help them get their kids checked into kids' church, give them a tour of the building, show them where the bathrooms are, save seats for them in service, sit with them in service, right? A lot of people really appreciate the fact that somebody from the church is sitting with them so they don't feel so awkward, right? This is a great way to kind of kickstart a plan your visit program. In fact, when we started doing this in my church, in the first month, we increased our first-time visitors by 42%, in the second month by 60%, in the third month by 87%, and then in the fourth month by 113% simply by implementing the Plan Your Visit model. So go out there, dive in, we'll see you soon. All right, so if you like this video and you want to learn more about how to use social media and the Plan Your Visit model, then we actually have a free gift for you. Just go over to churchgrowthagency.com and check out the free training we have there that'll explain a little bit more in depth about both and how you can use it at your church. Oh.